Megan and today I am doing a book review on Hush by Dylan Farrow. Before I jump into the review, I do want to let you guys know that I did receive a free copy of this book from NetGalley in exchange for an honest review. And just kind of throwing this out there, I know that it's not really normally something that's talked about, but you can't buy a review from me, at least. So this is my complete and honest opinion. And the further I get into the review, you will totally understand this, but I will never give a review just because somebody has asked me to. I will always, always be honest about it. So jumping into the book, let's get started. Hush tells the story of 17-year-old Shay, a young woman whose life has been shrouded in tragedy after her brother dies from a disease known as the blot five years prior to the start of the novel. Now, the only way to fight against the blot is with the help of the bards, people with great power who can perform tellings that are gifts to the people. Because Shay's family has been touched by the blot, they are shunned by the townspeople, and it's all that they can do to make enough ends meet to survive. When Shay's mother is murdered and the truth is covered up, Shay makes the decision that she will uncover the truth no matter the consequences. This leads her to High House, the home of the bards and the one place that she can find the truth. Or die trying. I wanted to love this novel, I really did. The first 30 pages were great and that's about where I filmed last week's video telling you that I had a great novel I wanted to talk about. That'll teach me for jumping to conclusions because after 30 pages, things got a bit muddy. She starts out as a strong character. She's lost everything. She's lost her younger brother, her father, her mother is no longer speaking, and she's shunned by everybody in town except for her two friends. And it's all that she can do just to survive. But as soon as she makes the decision to go to High House, she kind of becomes one-dimensional. There's no urgency in her character, in her path, and it really drags the novel on. The side characters of the novel were pretty forgettable, but surprisingly, they showed the most growth out of all of the characters in the novel. This book seemed to fall back on a lot of cliches, including the chosen one trope, which at this point, it's kind of boring, and it just dragged the story down. One of the things that kind of bugged me about this novel is what started off as this amazing and unique way for the character to express herself fell by the wayside as soon as she hit the high house, and I think that if they had, the author had stuck with that, the story would have been a little bit more dynamic rather than falling into the same old patterns that Chosen One stories seem to have. I feel like this is a story I've read a million times. I mean, certain things like the blot, the bards, that felt a little bit unique, but because it was just plugged into the same old formula, the book was kind of stale. It also got pretty muddy there in the middle because everything was either happening at once or was happening too slow and nothing was really clearly explained in the plot, so it, it got confusing. There really was no sense of time. Like I said, either everything was happening at once or it was happening too slow to really matter, and it felt like as soon as something interesting happened, it just got really jumbled up really fast, and then it, a single strand was pulled out for the ending. That was it. This big old tangled ball of mess and a single strand to finish it off. So it was a little disappointing in that aspect too. The world building, what little there was at the beginning, was actually really good. I could actually see this dying land and feel everything that was happening. I thought that the imagery during the tellings was quite interesting, but the execution left a lot to be desired. The writing style itself was actually pretty interesting for the first 30 pages. I was really excited to see where this book went, but then it turned into that big old tangled snarl, and I think that the author shows a lot of potential but I don't think the execution was right for this novel. I honestly just wish it had been clearer because this book could have been at least a four point star, but as it is, this book's only a three star for me, three out of five, which while not bad, is not something that I will aim to own a physical copy of or probably even reread. It was kind of just a way to pass the time for me and a way to see how another author writes and what they can do with their writing. All in all, final assessment here, had potential, didn't reach it. That's it for today's video. I'm really sorry I couldn't be more positive about this book. I mean, it did have some unique things going for it, so I definitely do recommend anybody who is interested in a story like this to give it a shot because my opinions are just that. 
my opinions and yours may differ. So if you do want to read it, please let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. If you do like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.